How you doing? I'm Matt. Today I want to show you how I made the world's first assembly outfeed table that features a YouTube play button, our YouTube play button, in the center encased in clear epoxy and trimmed with beautiful walnut trim. This thing is absolutely beautiful. This is the crown jewel of the 731 Woodwork shop now. It has T-Track, it has storage. Let me show you everything about it and then I'll show you how I made it. Be sure to stick around to the end because encasing a silver play button in epoxy is not the easiest thing, especially getting it back perfectly flat with the plywood so that it's a functional work table. You're gonna like how I did it. Let me show you. For the features, if you look at this outfeed table and go look at John Malecki's table, I was inspired by his table. It has T-Track, it has parts storage. It also has a storage area for the dust extractor, or if you don't have a dust extractor, you can use that storage area for your shop stool. I know a lot of times I like to sit at the work table and design things, or just sit there and think about life. We have 16 drawers in this workbench that features Ambrosia maple fronts. They're various sizes for storing various items. We have parts storage for screws, bolts, things like that. I've got three of those. All of the drawers feature ball bearing drawer slides so they glide smooth as butter. Then I also have two shelves on the back for storage of my jigs and other items. Let me show you how we did it. So to start this awesome table build, we break down the walnut to make our legs. This is eight quarter walnut or two inches thick. I'm gonna be gluing this stuff up to make three by three legs. I cut all of this stuff down using my miter saw. I cut them a little bit longer than I actually needed so that I could trim them up later. You see how warped these boards are, so I'm gonna use a planer sled and shim them up, run them through the planer, which I actually forgot to video, but they went through the planer and flattened them out. And then I cut them about three and a half inches wide each so that I can mill them down to three later. I would like to thank Working the Grain Hardwoods for donating all of the walnut and ambrosia maple for this amazing build. Now I joint two sides of every board so that I can have two flat sides to reference. And I did have to use some four quarter or one inch thick on some legs because I didn't have enough eight quarter material to use. Same thing, this four quarter is cut down into three and a half inch strips so I can glue them all up. So now we're gonna glue these awesome walnut legs together. So the main thing is when you're gluing up two, p two or more pieces of wood, like this is three pieces you want to make sure that that grain is not all the same directions. So if they were all facing that way, then the wood would have more of a tendency to move versus when all the grain is alternating against each other, it won't have as much tendency to move. Now the glue up. Now I just put all the clamps underneath what I'm fixing to glue up, spread that glue out, and I put a lot of glue on here. I did not spare the glue. Once the glue is on, I start stacking everything back to back so that no wet surfaces are touching each other unless they're meant to. Then we cinch all the clamps up real good and tight and I actually added some extras just for good measure. Let those dry overnight. Then I come back the next day and unclamp all of this and we start milling these down so that I can get three by three legs. First thing I did was joint two sides and then I planed one side. Once that was done, I checked for square on my table saw and then I ripped these legs down to three inches wide. And these CMT blades, I can't rave enough about them. That's a 40 tooth blade from CMT. I'll link all the tools and supplies in the description. They are fantastic. There we go, three by three and perfectly square. Now I cut them to length and then I use some CA glue to fill any cracks and knot holes that may be in the leg. And I did have to joint some of the longer, thinner stock with a straight edge and a circular saw like you see here that before I was able to run it through the table saw and cut out, start cutting out my aprons. The shorter stock I was able to do on the jointer. I cut all the pieces of the aprons out using the table saw. Once they were all cut out, it was time to start assembling things. I'm actually using the dowel max for my joinery. No pocket holes, I know. I want this workbench to be solid. So I ordered this dowel max from dowel max a website. And actually what happened was uh, dowel max, when they saw the order, they reached out to me and offered to uh, refund the money for use on the channel. So I greatly appreciate dowel max for that. The dowel max also includes the drill bit, stop collar, everything you need. You just order some extra dowels. Those will match up to these. It'll 
essentially look just like that. You just have to drill a lot of holes, but it was very easy to use and very simple to understand. And then here you see, I, I kept my apron up off the ground three inches and I just made a mark and lined the dial max up with that and then drilled the corresponding holes in the apron. Then I sanded everything to 120 grit before assembly. I used lots of glue here as well uh, in assembly. I didn't want any issues later on. And you see there's one extra hole there that I accidentally drilled. I had to put a dowel in there and shim it off. Check for square and then keep on building. And at this point I had to move everything to the floor because it was getting too big to be on the work table. And on the floor we're doing the same thing using dials. The only issue I had was here on the longer pieces because I didn't have clamps long enough. I wound up just taking two clamps and hooking them together to be able to clamp everything good and tight and I let that dry overnight. Out with the old and in with the new, moving the old workbench out of the way. I am gonna miss that I don't have casters on this new one, but I did use leveling feet I'll show you in just a minute. So here's a step that I probably could have done without. I put some cross pieces on here made out of, I just ripped plywood. I should have just used a whole plywood sheet. And here's the leveling feet I just mentioned. These things are very simple. I bought them on Amazon. That way I could get this thing level because my garage floor is so unlevel. Now I used my Masca M2 pocket hole jig and started drilling pocket holes for the panels that we're going to attach our drawers to. Just glue and an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws to attach it. And I did use the Viking arms here. These things come in clutch right here to be able to hold everything in place while I screwed the panels in place. Once those are done, I cut a sheet of plywood to fit for my shelf, and then I attach that with pocket hole screws. Then I put a panel behind the shelf so that nothing falls off in behind it later on down the line. We don't want any trouble. And then for the leveling feet in the center, I made these little blocks out of plywood to attach the leveling feet to. I just glued these two pieces together and screwed them on and then used glue and brad nails to attach them to the center of the structure underneath. I can't find my safety glasses. I've looked everywhere. You, do you see them? Because that would be Pretty fantastic if you saw them on video and I can't even see them in front of my face. I, I lost them a few minutes ago when they were on top of my head, but I've already checked there this time. <sighs> this is what defeated looks like when you can't find your safety glasses. Next, it's time to cover the edges of the plywood. So I ripped these strips of walnut down and used glue and clamps to hold them in place while they dried. And I've done this on all exposed plywood edges. Time to start making drawers. So I started breaking everything down with my circular saw and a straight edge and also the table saw, if I could fit it on the table saw. And I don't go into a whole lot of detail on the drawer making here because I just made a video all about how to make drawers and it was for this workbench. It's about a couple of weeks before this one. You can go check that out. And then we just attach the drawer slides, very easy. Again, there's a video on how to do all this a couple weeks ago. Look at all these drawers. There's 18 drawers total, plus three parts organizer pullouts that's gonna be in the bench. Then we're gonna start putting the drawer faces on. And once we do that, we're gonna be ready for the top. The most epic part of this build is coming up. Once I got all the drawers installed, I actually forgot that I needed a bottom shelf, so I had to go back and do this later. Again, the Viking arm's coming in clutch to help me hold it up so I can get some screws in there. Then I started milling down the drawer faces. Now, this is Ambrosia Maple. You'll see that the DeWalt planer actually clogged up on me here, and that's why you see so much of the dust coming forward. I'd already cleaned it out one time, and it clogged up again. Look at that Ambrosia. Ooh, that looks good. Now I cut them to the length and then also use the jointer to joint one edge and that way I could use the table saw to cut the other edge and get them to the size that I needed. Then I installed all the drawer faces on the drawer. I 
I went back and added this plywood panel so that the dust extractor would have something to bump up against when it goes into the slot and it wouldn't hit those drawers and knock them out. Then I added a small strip of wood for a stop on the tool organizer so it wouldn't move. I sanded all my drawer faces to 120 grit before putting the Danish oil on there. I also sanded the frame with 120 grit all the way around, and I put Danish oil on the whole frame and drawer faces. And I actually regret doing this after I'd done it because it took so long to dry. I, I wish I had used Odie's oil on the whole thing. I actually used Odie's on the top later. This stuff looks really good. I like how it made all of the wood pop, but it just takes a long time to dry. Now I use those leveling feet before I put all the drawers back in and level the entire structure before I started to add the plywood top. This is starting to come together. I've got another sheet of plywood that's gonna go in there and then the top, which should be, if I can do it right, wow, it should be awesome. Happy, happy, happy. All right, now it's time to unbox the silver, silver play, button. play button. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support and subscribing to our channel. So the plan is to actually embed this silver play button into my assembly table and then cover it with clear epoxy so that it's there well, for as long as this workbench is here. A couple of concerns I've got. One, messing up the epoxy when I pour it and it looks like crap. Two is that these letters I don't know if they're etched on there or if it's stickers. I worry that the epoxy will lift it and then there'll just be a play button with a bunch of floating letters in there. My last concern, when I get the epoxy filled, how am I gonna level that back with the surface so that it's a functional assembly table and I don't ruin the veneer on the plywood? I actually searched high and low for affordable T-Track because at this point in the build, I had spent a lot of money. And so I actually found the cheapest T-Track I could find that was still good quality. I'll drop a link in the description below to where I got this from. Now it's time to cut the hole for the play button. I use this CMT up and down cut compression bit. That way it wouldn't tear out the plywood. I set up a jig and you'll see right here, my stop moved. Oh, I was, oh, it went just about an eighth inch pass. So I set up a stop block behind it, clamped that in place and made my other passes. I, I used double-sided tape on the stop block, but it moved, so every one of them from then on got clamped down. I used three passes every time to be able to cut this out. That way, I didn't take too much material at any one time and create a mess. And I also had this sheet of plywood lifted up off the other one using bench cookie. Once the hole was cut out, I used my chisel to square up the inside corners so that I had a nice square frame to use to embed the play button. So in the center on the bottom sheet of plywood, I actually used wood glue and went around the outside area of where the hole will be to create hopefully a seal so that the epoxy will not leak out. Then we put that top sheet in place and I screwed it from underneath with one inch screws. Now it's time to make that walnut frame for the play button. And I just used my table saw to rip some small strips of walnut. Then I used my table saw sled that I built a few weeks back. You can check that video out. It's on the channel and the adjustable fence to create perfect 45 degree miters. It fit. Happy day, people. Happy day. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. So I took my circuit saw and straight edge and actually rip the very edge of the plywood off with this 40 tooth CMT blade so that everything's nice and smooth for this edge trim. I just use walnut glue and brad nail these on. They look awesome. Now it's time to install the T-Track and I use a three quarter inch CMT straight bit and then I use a Craig setup block that I recently got, and these things are awesome. 
And then I used a sacrificial piece so that I wouldn't tear out any of my edge trim. Now you're gonna create a giant mess when you do this. But I set the depth at 3 8 of an inch. So I used a straight edge to help guide my router. I've got it clamped in place. I didn't have it clamped good enough on the far end so when I got there it actually moved on me. I was able to catch it before it made too big of a mess, so that's exactly where I'm gonna put the cross dado for the other T-Track. Everything cleaned up before we put the T-Tracks in, that's what it looks like. So I put my old blade back on my miter saw to be able to cut this aluminum. It'll cut it just fine, I just didn't wanna tear up a good blade. I just used some CA glue to help hold it down, hopefully to give it a little more strength and then screwed it in place with the included screw. Here you see my wife writing a prayer under where the play button will be. And then I followed up beside it with one of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 6, 8. Then we set the play button in place. I used a little bit of CA glue on the face of the play button in hopes to create a seal so that the epoxy wouldn't run under there. And I also used wood glue on the edges so that we could glue that to the plywood. Took my time and made sure everything was nice where I wanted it. Once everything was in place, I took some 10 pound plates and placed on there to hold them down and in place while it dried. I'd like to thank Total Boat for supplying the epoxy for this project. Uh, it's like the second time I've ever used epoxy and I'm actually fairly nervous about this coming out right. One, two, this is gonna take forever. Four, five, The moment we've all been waiting for, right? The moment I've been waiting for, anyway. I'm, I'm really concerned. I'm scared. <laughs> it's a lot of work going into this. You ready? No. Oh, God. Let's Man, I hope I did this right. Let's do it. Oh, my gosh, you did it. I can't believe you just did that. I did it. All right. Good job. Good job. Oh, no I don't have enough. That's more than you expected. That ain't going to be enough. It ain't going to be nowhere near enough. Mm -hmm. Spare parts? Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Maybe a little. You see a, several bubbles here, and I was actually quite concerned about that. I hit it a couple of times with a heat gun, as you see here, and they, most of them come out. This is a sticker. The whole thing, the mirror part's a sticker. It's, it's peeling up. The heat is making it peel away. It's gonna come off. Yeah, it's, it's done. I can already see it coming up. You look good for a couple minutes. If you can't tell by my reaction here, I thought that the project was ruined at this point. I could tell that the play button was actually disintegrating, for lack of a better term, underneath the reaction of the epoxy. There was nothing left to do other than wait at this point. The next morning I got up and this is what it looked like, but all in all, I was actually quite pleased with how this came out. This actually dried for about 10 days because we went on vacation. When we come back, I used this white side surfacing bit and used my router, my plunge router, and I built a jig specifically for this. You can see I cut eight inch strips to be able to run the jig on. And I also had T-track stops and plywood so that the jig wouldn't fall, accidentally fall off of those eighth inch strips. Then it was just a game of making micro adjustments. I would make passes all the way across and then I would micro adjust, clean it up, make another pass until I got to this point, which is perfectly flat with the plywood veneer. There is a little bit, you can see that shiny right there in the triangle of the play button. That's where some of the epoxy actually seeped underneath. I was able to sand that off. We started at 400 grit and I sanded it all the way to 2000 grit and then used a polishing pad and some rubbing compound to get it back crystal clear. On the 1500 and 2000, I used a little bit of water to wet sand, as you see here. And that actually helped get a lot of those microscopic scratches out. Then I used a tack cloth to wipe up any dust or debris before I started the polishing on the polishing compound. 
Then I just used some painter's tape so that I could tape off around the plywood so that I wouldn't get any polishing compound in the plywood. The polishing pad on this sander worked really well. Now I bring a little water on there to help the rubbing compound go in there. Buff it off, crystal clear. Look at that. One of the last steps to do was actually apply some finish to the top. I decided to go with Odie's oil for the top. I was not happy with the Danish oil on the bottom, but I'm extremely happy with this Odie's for the top. I used it on the trim as well as on the entire surface of the top. Putting it around that play button really brings that walnut to life. Then you just buff off the excess, it dries really well. I actually went back and put a whole coat of it on the base. I'm extremely biased here, but I think this is the most beautiful assembly table ever created. I love this table and I'm extremely proud of this project. As far as T-Track accessories, I bought all of these, some Rockler hold down clamps, Rockler bench cookies that elevate work pieces off the surface. I got some armor tool toggle clamps as well as push clamps and fences. You know what time it is, power tip time. So the power tip for this entire build is to believe in yourself. I had some doubts when I come into this project. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to pull it off, but that's the power tip. Don't underestimate yourself. I, I made some mistakes. Some things wound up in the fire bin and then some things made it on the table. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. I believe in you. My mentor, Daryl Eves, and I come up with this idea and I wanted to go all out on it. Man, that thing is pretty. I'm gonna tell you, I like this build. Don't forget to check the links in the description below for the tools, supplies, and build plans on this project. If you like this video, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to the next set of shop projects. Click in that box, get you that big old virtual fist bump. Click that box, another one of my favorite videos. Thank you so much for watching this video.